Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Now today, as you can see, I've got part of the basement back on my craft table. Now this is because I'm starting on Christmas and my idea this year is to actually make a display that covers all of the basement frontage. Now obviously I could put stuff on the pavement but I think it would be more realistic if the lower basement area was to be decorated to be viewed from the pavement. Now I got this idea with my recent Halloween decorations and I've been mulling it over ever since. And I decided that um, in order to make things a bit easier, I'd bring at least half of the basement door upstairs. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to look at setting it up so that this area where my hand is, actually if I put it my hand through here, you can see it a bit better, is the entrance into the actual creepy part of my creepermas. And we're going to sit, I'm going to have a look at how I can possibly do that. I think what I want to do is I want to put some kind of a um, curtain at the end of here. I'm not sure I want it at this end because I think I want to put somebody, something in there. And um, I'm going to have a look at ways that I can do that. And um, let's get on with it. My Creepmas inspiration is coming from this sign from last year with Santa's grotty grotto, the kind of place that you don't want to visit. That is going to be actually in the other part of the basement, but I'm now going to start off by hopefully explaining a bit better what I'm trying to do today. Now I've moved the basement round and I have took my camera off its stand so if this is wobblier than normal I do apologise. But as you can see there's my gateway and my steps down into my basement area and then down here we've got the section where I want to be decorating. Now this section needs to be slightly creepy but slightly inviting and then going under the stairway there will be the way through and some kind of curtain at the far side to um, screen off the grotty grotto from prying eyes. I think that's going to be the best way that I can do it and then I can have viewing from up here so that people can actually see down into the grotto. I have an idea for that. And I may also put a few decorations at the top, but I don't want to fill the footpath with lots of decorations. So this is the area I've got. It's not very big and I need to figure out what I can do there. Now my curtain is going to have to come down here. Um, I'm thinking that I need to make something that attaches under there. I don't want it attaching on this edge. Um, it's not really going to be used, obviously, because um, I'm not small enough to walk through. But I've got to decide what I want. In an ideal world, I would love some of that um, thin, tinsel-y stuff that you get that you used to get on a strip and you could cut it up to put on your Christmas tree. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get anything suitable, but um, that would be ideal. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make something myself. And obviously, I'm going to have to make it with a um, slope so that it fits and works. I want something to go in here. I do need to touch up the grey a bit because there's a few places that I missed when I painted the basement last year. Oops. Um, maybe I'll have 
a naughty elf lurking down there or something else I don't know um, obviously this is getting darker as we come this way I may even fit in some kind of light down there that I then need to be able to access to turn on I do use that area quite often for the Christmas lights and the area underneath the footpath it's great for putting um, battery packs and things out of the way so I think my first um, job is going to be to um, do something with the door so I'm going to make the door look a bit more welcoming first the first thing that I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it is actually going to be some topiary pieces that I want to go either side of the basement door now I have decided that the entry to my grotty grotto is going to have a kind of twisted candy theme so I've got a couple of other little things in mind that I'll show you at the end that are based upon um, other videos that I've done but these I'm going to make and show you how I'm doing them. I'm starting off with a couple of little um, faux cotton reels. These are some that I bought for crafting. They look like little wooden cotton reels. They're the great size to make the kind of pots that I want because I don't need a real pot because it's just going to be a display piece. And I could use a cone. I could make a paper cone and stick that on top. But instead I'm going to use these eggs because as I think I mentioned in one of my Halloween videos, I've got them and um, I'm trying to use up the things that I've got. So this is going to be the basis for my um, topiary. Um, I'm going to use some moss and then I'm going to decorate it. So I'm going to start off with um, some paint on these and I've got some red paint which is just some red paint there which I've got in my little palette just off screen and I'm going to paint these um, give them a base coat of red I don't know if I'm going to do anything else on top of the red but I'm going to start off with red and then we'll go on to um, covering these with some um, moss the Topiaries are well underway now, as you can see. I have just been daubing the um, eggs with some of my glue and then throwing chunks of moss on. Now, not quite as um, randomly as it might look at the moment, but I have been building. I've been building the layers up from the bottom upwards. Now. It's messy. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. Let me take these clothes pins off. I'm using the clothes pegs to um, allow them to stand up, as you can see with that one. But I've put them onto toothpicks and I am just sticking this stuff on. And I'm literally going round and wedging it into the glue. My hands have been covered in glue that many times. I have um, taken the, I've been and washed my hands that many times and I'm probably going to be finding bits of glue and moss everywhere for I don't know how long. I think it's going to be at the moment only second to glitter in its annoying factor. But I do like how these are coming together. Now I would some gaps on here as you can see. And I don't want to put my fingers straight into the fresh bit of glue so I need to find maybe a chunk of the moss. You could use the flocking material like I used for my um, 148th scale landscaping but I've got moss Moss seems to be fairly um, generally available and I like using things that 
I know people can get hold of without having to go to um, specific model suppliers, that kind of thing. Now, as you can see, as I push this round, the amount of white is going down. And because I've used the moss as well, I've got a really nice mixture of colours. Um, now, I don't, I haven't painted the eggs. You could, by all means, paint the egg um, prior to putting the moss on. But because I'm going to add um, decorations, I figure I can cover up any little white bits that show through with the decorations. And I think that is about done. I am not getting extra bits stuck to me. I am um, take that bit off because it's obviously not stuck to anything. And I've got myself my topiary. So I'm going to allow these to dry for a while before I stick them onto their bases. And then we're going to look at decorating them. So I'm going to go off and let these dry and um, I'll be back with you shortly. I have attached the two parts of the topiary, the base and the actual topiary part. And I'm now going to start decorating these. Now to decorate them, I'm going to use some seed beads. These just happen to be some that I've got lying around. You know, you can use anything you want. If you happen to be skilled with polymer clay or something like that, you could make little candy shaped pieces, you know, little bonbon type things. And they would look superb. But I'm making do with the beads because, you know, it fits with my using what I've got mentality. I've got some glue and I've got a cocktail stick and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a bit of glue somewhere. I'm going to use my tweezers to pick up a bead. They are going to pick up a bead. Okay, they're going to throw a bead all around and I'm going to pop that onto there. Now I'm actually going to move it so that it's sideways on so you don't see the hole in the seed bead. And hopefully you can see that there is the first bead on there. Um, you can put on as many or as few as you like. It is purely your decision and I've managed to get two beads this time which is typical. And I'm just going to go around and dab around and stick beads in wherever I feel I need it. Um, no idea how many that will be. I'll keep doing it until I think it looks right. As you can see, hopefully you can see that I've got the first few on there. Um, my glue dries clear um, so that won't be quite so obvious and you can sort of bury it into the moss a bit, put it on top, whatever you like. You could decorate that you could leave these as they are and just have topiary. You could wrap some kind of garland around them. It is entirely up to you. Now you could also give these a spooky side and um, I'll show you how I can spook these up in just a few minutes. Now to spook these up a bit, we're going to give this a face. Now I'm going to recommend that you start on the side that you haven't got um, gems on or you do this first. And what I've done is I've made some eyes. Hopefully you can see those. And I've made a little mouth. Now, the mouth is made from a 9mm punch circle. The eyes are made from 6 and 3mm punch circles. And this just uses some scraps of black and white cardstock. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these the same way that I've been attaching the little beads. And I'm just going to put a bit of glue and add an eye. And I'm going to put, I'm going to do that side. 
a bit more glue and another eye and I'm going to take a third lot of glue somewhere down here and I'm going to attach the mouth. Now I've made um, teeth on my mouths just with little tiny snippets of white cardstock and the little um, lumps at the bottom will dry clear because that's just my glue and then I've got a spooky face on my um, topiary. Obviously if you're going to do them spooky put the faces on and then decorate them with the decorations as you would do if you're making a non-spooky version but um, yeah that is how you um, spook up your topiary. So what I've got here are my Christmas topiaries, my Creepmas topiaries. Um, now if I turn that one around you can see that actually if that was just covered in those beads it would look quite pretty and it would pass as a Christmas decoration. But of course the other way around it's got the spook factor which is just what I'm going for and um, I'm really pleased because all that has come out of stuff that was just hanging around my craft room. There's far too much stuff hanging around my craft room. I confess that totally and utterly but they are perfect for what I want. Now as I said a little earlier on I've also made a couple of pieces that um, I've not done in detail because I've covered them in previous videos. Now the first one is actually a recent video. This is a doormat which I made for my sort of spooky, my spooky season, my Halloween stuff. I made some spooky doormats. One of them is actually in place on that basement as we speak. And I've just used some red felt and some card on the back to stiffen it up a bit and I've painted Happy Creepmas on it. I'm definitely having a Creepmas kind of a year this year. Now I actually painted that using a dotting tool. Sometimes these are sold as embossing tools or debossing tools depending on which way you use them or you can buy them for nail art and I found that that was actually the best thing for painting on the felt. Um, I've done some in the past with a toothpick but that gave me a, um, a, bigger, um, a bigger point to work with. Now I could go back over the white but I think it looks passable and so that will be decorating my um, basement door in due course. Now I've also made a wreath. Now as you can see I'm really going with this kind of um, candy sort of theme, lots of red and obviously the white. Now the wreath is made from um, sometimes called craft sticks, always were pipe cleaners. These are the chenille um, version which are quite fluffy and all that is is a red and a white stick that have been twisted together. This is um, extra because I've obviously got a front door as well so I will probably be making a, another version and all I do is I use something, I've used this tube which is what I just knocked over um, to give me a nice circle but you can just use anything that's about the right size um, to give you your shape. Now I've made my big candy cane using a plastic straw. This is actually the mouth piece of a bendable plastic straw. I took it and bent it, which has given me my curve, and then the bit that you would have used to actually put in your mouth rather than the bit that would have gone in your drink is the um, base of my candy cane. And all I've done with this is I painted it red, obviously, and then I um, attached some embroidery thread, wrapped it round to give me my um, 
stripe and I've just covered it with a coat of um, matte mod podge just to keep it all in place and I think that's going to look quite well I may put a little bit of another colour maybe a bit of something green um, before it goes on the door and then it'll be a, put at a bit of an angle like that so that one's you know it's not straight it's a bit of an angle but um, I went with red for the base colour rather than white which would probably have been more accurate because the straw was pink and I was worried about the white paint covering it and the red covered it really really easily so um, the wreaths are again something that I've covered in a previous video um, this was a video from last year um, and um, I showed a number of different possibilities for a wreath there lots of um, possibilities with wreaths for doll's houses but um, I find that something that bends like these makes a great base and here we have my little um, trio of projects that are going to dress my basement door um, as I've said throughout this you could quite easily do this to um, decorate a more traditional Christmas rather than Creepmas but you know I make no apologies for my um, aesthetic of this doll's house um, hopefully you know it's given you some ideas I've got lots of ideas how I'm going to carry on decorating my basement um, and um, I hope you'll stick around to see some more if you've enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe and until next time bye